Welcome to your first day on the job. This is your very own autopilot ship, where you will eat and sleep for the duration of your contract. Make yourself at home. To complete the onboarding process, you will want to check the instruction manual and sign into your ship's computer terminal. We trust you will be a great asset to the company. Great, great asset to the company. Asset. Great, great, great asset to the company. Lethal Company is a deceptively simple game. It's a four-player co-op where you collect scrap metal on various moons and sell it to the lethal CEO. Based on that description, the average gamer, in their ignorance, might say some shit like, Eh, sounds kind of boring. No! It's so hard for me to even really talk about Lethal Company, because it's so much more than just a game. It's the next step in the silly co-op genre, and some of the most fun I've had just sitting down and playing a video game in years. So let's go, me and you, through everything Lethal Company does right, the few things it could do a little bit better, and why I won't be giving you that new raise. Lethal Company consists of one core gameplay loop. It's pretty simple. You go to moons, get scrap to fill a quota, sell scrap to fill the quota, go to new moons and buy equipment to get more scrap. The only real player action is gathering scrap in these facilities and avoiding the hundreds of thousands of ways to die. And the only reward is company credits which go right back into equipment or, if you're really, truly balling, pimping out the ship. This core loop appears pretty simple, but it is sneakily deep when it decides to be. 90% of playtime is spent collecting scrap. This seemingly bog standard task, however, can quickly become a careful balance of resource management, navigation, and survival horror if shit hits the fan. There are monsters, turrets, landmines, and other shit around every corner, each of which can be countered in various ways. There's no permanent progression besides the knowledge you gain on how to best defend yourself against these threats and collect guapo, which I think is a really cool alternative to traditional progression. Wait, fuck, is Lethal Company a roguelike? Aww. There's even more hidden complexity in the way the world is generated. The exteriors of moons are static, and the interiors are procedural. With this choice, Lethal Company gets to have its maze-like intense indoor navigation without the annoyance of searching for how to actually get to it every time. This saves a lot of potential headache and repetition, and since I don't need to refine where the fun is every time I visit a moon, I can just go back in there and trap out. But name be Sam, you might be asking. This sounds pretty good, but it doesn't seem like anything special, it's just a collect-a-thon. And to you, I say, as I jam my thumb in your eye socket, proximity chat, the boys, and a 40 ounce. I've been purposefully hiding the very obvious million dollar draw of Lethal Company to try and evaluate its core gameplay on its own, but there's no ignoring the impact proximity chat and communication features have on this game, and what push it into the Hall of Fame. If Lethal Company's core gameplay is a pretty okay cake, proximity chat is the most delicious, splendid, succulent white frosting ever devised. Every co-op game should just do proximity chat going forward, make this the grapple hook of co-op games. Proximity chat is not only extremely funny and or scary, case in point. I'm on a railing, it yeah, can't, Sam, where are you? Sam, it where can't are you? hurt me, I'm on a railing, it can't hurt me. I think. I don't know where it went, I'm just running around. Oh. <laughs> Yo, I don't think Dylan made it, guys. But it also influences the way you actually play the game. Splitting up is way more efficient for scrap collection, but then you run the risk of losing communication with your teammates and getting lost or spooked, leaving you with a really tough choice to make. If your crew decides to buy some walkie-talkies, someone can chill on the ship and maintain contact with a crew member, sometimes resulting in that member becoming a de facto search party leader. It's often unclear as to whether or not a teammate's dead, and because you can't hear them, you may leave the moon without some of your boys and get flamed back on the ship. These little decisions made because of your communication and available info can snowball into run-ending or run-saving plays, and it's also just a ton of fun. Proximity chat also feels like it elevates the stakes. Raise the stakes! I've heard and let out some genuine screams of terror and voice actor level performances because of the immersion proximity chat provides. Lethal Company is real, dude. If you die in Lethal Company, you die in real life, oh, dude. Look out, look out. <laughs> Hearing somebody scream fucking bloody murder a few doors down or scream out in agony at the death of a comrade brings this energy and tension to Lethal Company. I haven't really experienced in other co-op games. The game isn't trying to make you react strongly either. It's not trying to force your hand with some poppy playtime ass jump scare. It just knows its strengths and builds scenarios that leave a lot up to the player and how they want to react, normally with abject terror. This shit just rocks.
Like I said, I love this game, and these are some small nitpicks, but I think they're worth at least mentioning. I think a bit more could have been done with the lore. The bestiary and logs are interesting, but the world created here is so cool that I'd love to see at least another set of logs or maybe some secrets that hint at the company's purpose, what's up with the moons, and why we're out here at all, some stuff like that. Sigurd's logs ask these questions, but don't really do anything to answer them or even point us in the right direction. I'm all for theorizing, you know, I like FNAF, but right now there's almost nothing to go off of. Another point is that I think the stamina should be slightly increased, or at least have an upgrade slash item available to increase it, because right now a movement can get really intensely annoying. The tension it creates is great, but just getting from place to place with no items or anything takes a little too long, especially at the beginning of a new day. The UI is a bit dusty, that's probably by design though, so I can't complain too much. The hands full loot to pocket loot ratio is a little whack, and a few more options to counter monsters would add some more, I think, much needed depth. Oh my god, oh my god, what the fuck? That's it though, those are my only real complaints. All of these could be fixed in one update, and even then they're super subjective, like a lot of people might have zero problems with any of these. Lethal Company is one of the best types of games, where if you were to take a single piece out of it, the whole thing would fall apart. Besides all this game design analysis BS I'm trying to pull though, it's just really fun. If any game can make me laugh as hard as that stupid bees clip that I watch like every other day. I'm taking the bee, I'm taking the hive, I'm taking the hive. Ow! Ow! Hello? <laughs> Is Sam alive? <laughs> My game just- It's got something special going on. I was not expecting to love this game as much as I do. I'm normally not a huge fan of co-op games outside of like, It Takes Two. And I think I've only just scratched the surface of this game, and I cannot wait to get back into it. I'm feeling, on the grand Namie Sam scale, an 8.5. Stay tuned, dipshits, we got a lot coming up. Hey! <laughs>